Today's episode comes from a Mary's memo that we didn't have in our mom's three ring binder. That's right. We found it on the I Miss the Valentine Theater Facebook group. It was posted last November by Gloria, just in case someone might like to use one of the recipes for their Thanksgiving meal. She mentioned that just like us, her mom collected Mary's memos. So thank you for posting this, Gloria. We are really excited to try it. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. Hey everyone, this is Kristen. And this is Carrie. So the recipe today comes from November 20th, 1978. Oh, nice. Yep, and it is called Orpha Tomlinson's Pumpkin Date Tort. Ooh. So yummers. All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yay. Happy Thanksgiving. We're going to make this delicious pumpkin date tort for our Thanksgiving treat. In it is going to be one cup of chopped dates, some chopped nuts. We chose pecans. There's going to be brown sugar, pumpkin, of course, and then all your uh, dry ingredients, flour, nutmeg, cinnamon, and yummy, yummy, yummy spices. Yeah, ginger is in this too. Ooh, good, good. Yes, so Kara's going to get started with the dry ingredients, and I'm okay. going to mess with the nuts. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, so I'm super excited. Pumpkin spices, like that you put in a pumpkin cake or yes. pie or any pumpkin thing that you make are absolutely some of my favorite. I love them. And as, I mean, everybody knows, pumpkin spice has become <laughs> such a big thing. It has. Yeah. Yes. I'm assuming it's because it seems like such a warm hug in a cold evening. Yes. Which in hindsight is totally weird because we didn't have pumpkin spice when I was a kid living in Ohio. Right. We've had it since I've been an adult living in Georgia. Georgia and it's not cold. No, no, but you know, fall is one of my favorite seasons. It's so lovely. It is. It makes you think of fire in your fireplace. Yes, just all those warm, huggy, comfortable kind of things. Yes. Well, there's nothing better than a cool yeah. nip in the air and you're in your big old sweatshirt, yep. you know, feeling cozy. We were just talking about that, that we just went to see your daughter in the band at the football game yes. and how much fun it was was going to be once it turned fall and it got oh, yeah. cooler and we talked about sitting with your sweatshirt on and drinking a you know a hot cup of cider or coffee or something with a little more zip added to it pumpkin spice <laughs> latte <laughs> that's right and watching the game yes. how much fun that would be and we're not particularly sporty people i like the sports but i do like that feeling of just, I don't know, feeling cozy when everything else is cool. Yes. It's yes. so nice. And it's so funny. It reminds me of the um, Snoopy and Charlie Brown Thanksgiving special. Oh, do how did I do? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the one with football, right? Yes. Charlie Brown keeps trying to kick the ball. Yep. This one actually aired on November 20th, 1973. So exactly five years before this recipe came out. Oh, Charlie Brown. Yeah. And what I always loved about it is the feast that Snoopy and Charlie Brown feed to their guests. So okay. do you remember the story at all? Uh, apparently not. Okay. So Peppermint Patty invites herself over to Charlie Brown's house for a Thanksgiving meal. And Charlie Brown was like, well, we're going to my grandma's and she just was pushy as heck and says my dad's out of town and we're I'm coming, coming over. over right okay and she invites marcy and some other people franklin and then of course charlie brown's friends come sure. and his sister sally yes yeah, so right on charles right and so over. you know no parental involvement in Never. the peanuts gang right. um shows and so snoopy helps charlie make the meal <laughs> Perfect. And so my favorite part is what they served. They okay. served popcorn. I remember that. Toast. Oh, it's a perfect <laughs> Thanksgiving meal. Love I love the toast. <laughs> Pretzel sticks and jelly beans. How did they get <laughs> jelly beans at Thanksgiving? I wonder that too. Peppermint Patty gets all mad and says, this is the lamest Thanksgiving meal ever. Where's the turkey? Where's the stuffing? Where's all the pumpkin pie? And she's really mean to Charlie Brown. Always. And to Snoopy, of course. 
And so they end up going over to Charlie Brown's grandma's house to have dinner. Aww. Isn't that cute? And they sing over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Just like we did. Yes, but then Charlie Brown at the end goes, well, the only problem with this is that my grandma lives in a condominium. <laughs> Grandma. No, not no. so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm taking the chop dates and I am adding them to the pecans with two tablespoons of flour. And I think that's the flour kind of coats them so that they hang in midair in this batter yes. and don't all fall to the bottom. That is absolutely what is encouraged in the Great British Bake Off. I love that show. Paul Hollywood would have it no <laughs> other way. No other way. Mm -mm. Well, again, going back to the pumpkin spices. Yes. So as we all know, they have shown up in everything yes. nowadays. And a lot of them make sense. Like I, I like the pumpkin spice creamer in my coffee. Ooh, I yeah. think to me that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I love the pumpkin spice donuts. Oh, I bet oh, those are tasty. They are so good. But then things kind of take a turn for the odd sometimes. <laughs> Always. With the pumpkin spice. Yeah. Companies are like, well, pumpkin spice creamer is a big thing. So pumpkin spice Twinkies will oh, be a big thing. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Uh -uh. Or pumpkin spice Pringles. Oh. Seriously. Yeah, I have seen pumpkin spice flavored potato understand. chips. Oh, here's the, the piece to resist on. Oh, no. Pumpkin spice ramen. What? Ew. I don't know. I really like pumpkin spice. Yeah, but that ramen. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's pushing um, it. But I did see one, and I wanted to make sure that you were aware that oh. pumpkin spice was available. Okay. Poo-pourri. <laughs> Pumpkin spice poopery. I do love the poopery. <laughs> it makes you feel like you are very safe going to the bathroom anywhere and that you're not going to gross people out. You use right. it prior to going potty. It's, it, well, it's the before you poo spray. <laughs> the advertisements, if you haven't seen them, are hilarious. They are funny. Mm -hmm. I do find that they all smell like lemon. They do because they have lemon oil that kind of takes away the smell. Right. And we are not sponsored by Poopery, but hey, Poopery, if you would like to be our sponsor, <laughs> we're happy to have you on board. We'll plug you again next week. We're happy to. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, well, I just got too much pumpkin. We have a cup and a third of pumpkin. And so basically, we're going to use almost an entire small can of pumpkin. We'll have a little bit left over, which makes me want to dump it all in. But I don't want to ruin the recipe. So we will not do that. No, and, you know, pumpkin, when you cook with it, makes things incredible incredibly moist mm -hmm. and so when you get too much pumpkin the moisture level is almost bad storage is just a bear yeah but you know what i guess that just means we're gonna have to eat the heck out of this cake so there's none oh, left that's a oh, shame too bad you know what we should do what we should get somebody else involved in the eating of this cake <gasps> That would be a great idea. Hey, I think I know somebody. I have a friend who lives here in Georgia who actually grew up in Ohio. Oh, I think we should ask her. Her name is Beth. She gave us the great tip about using the ball jar lids for the uh, lard sour cream cookies oh, that we yes. did. Yes. Oh, let's see if she wants to come over and give it a taste. We'll have her give it a taste. What fun. That's a great idea. She'll be our first official taste tester that we are not related to. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. I like it. Yes, then we can ask her about her favorite Thanksgiving memories, because I know that I have you know, my favorite childhood foods from Thanksgiving, my favorite memories from Thanksgiving, and one of my favorite foods that, you know, it, it's so weird, it does not feel like Thanksgiving if we don't have this, but it's really not a Thanksgiving food. You know, okay. people wouldn't think of this, and it is our Aunt Cindy's spinach salad. Mm. Mm. That stuff is so good. It is. And she even makes a homemade dressing to yep, go with yep. it. Yep, yep. And she, I think she makes hers um, just like the recipe that I found in Mary's Memo. I wonder if she found her recipe on a Mary's Memo. Right. Yes. And, and now so it's our tradition. It is our tradition. And the actual salad dressing is made with ketchup. Mm -hmm. But I've seen it online, the same kind of salad and salad dressing made with tomato soup. Oh, because you put a lot of sugar into the salad dressing as well. Yes, and some oil. Yeah. It's like a French dressing. It is. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so it's so tasty, but this 
salad is called spinach salad and it has all these wonderful Asian additions to it. Mm -hmm. So it has bean, bean sprouts, mm -hmm. a can of bean sprouts. Yep. Water chestnuts, one of oh, my favorites. I yes. love the crunch of water chestnuts. Bacon. Right. Right. Well, bacon just makes everything better. That's as right. As mentioned. Yes. Yep. And what else does it have on it? Chopped egg, I think. Yes. And yes. I think onion as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is yep. so, so good. Yes. I, oh, I do love that spinach. That does feel like Thanksgiving. It does, which is mm -hmm. funny because it is just the antithesis of a fall food. Right. You know? Right. And it's so delicious. You can it have is. it anytime. Anytime. One of my very first Thanksgiving meals that I helped cook, mm -hmm. I was visiting a friend who lives um, in Arizona mm -hmm. and neither one of us had ever cooked a Thanksgiving meal before. She had some of her friends coming. Obviously I was there. And so we're making a turkey for the very first <laughs> time. We had stuffing. We had everything that you think of in a traditional Thanksgiving. We get done. We are getting everything on the table. And she looks at me and she goes, oh my gosh, we forgot the spaghetti. What? Spaghetti? <laughs> That's what, that was my reaction. What? Well, her family is very Italian. It's just, you know, with her family being Italian, that's just what you did. You just had spaghetti, at, spaghetti Thanksgiving. at Thanksgiving as an option. So that got me thinking. So as our um, intrepid listeners, mm -hmm. what does your family do that's slightly outside of that traditional Thanksgiving food, but makes your Thanksgiving extra special and feel like Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, we'd love to hear about it. Oh, for sure. Cause yeah. there's gotta be all kinds of things. Well, Carrie has all the dry ingredients mixed in. I do. And I have to tell you, they smell as good as any pumpkin spice Pringle I have ever had. <laughs> you are funny. All right, so I think according to the directions, we now need to add in the pumpkin and the eggs. We do, so we're gonna start adding in the wet ingredients to this. And I believe the first of those is supposed to be the melted butter. Oh, well, I didn't melt the butter yet. So we're so going to you're going to want to that. melt the butter. Yes. Because uh, that'll help a lot in adding it into the dry ingredients. And we have a couple little chunks of brown sugar. And I'm going to kind of moosh and get the lumps okay. going. But I can see that you very nicely mixed your dates and nuts with a lovely little coating of flour. I did. I did indeed. Let me put the butter in a little dish. We'll get that microwave. All right. I was looking up what on earth makes this a tort? Because in my mind, a tort is very thin layers of cake with like a whipped creamy filling in between. Yes. It looks to me more like a quick bread recipe mm -hmm. that we're putting into cake pans. What's next? After the butter? We have to add eggs. It says eggs are next. Right, and it Here does say come. one at a time. So Whoopsie daisy. So we're just going to bloop. I already cracked them. So yeah. there. Oh, look, there's one. Oh, you're so good. I'm so gifted at this baking stuff. <laughs> You know what you should do? What? You should do a podcast. About cooking. About what? cooking. You should share this gift with others, oh Kristen. Oh, my gosh. More, I egg. Also, more egg. More egg. Oh, my goodness. I also love to talk. So a podcast would be great. This is right up your alley. Whoop, there's another one. Hot diggity. We're doing great. I'm just going to stand here with the egg bowl okay. in my hand. Oh, it Ooh, is. Oh, it smells so yummy. It really It smells does. like Thanksgiving. All right. So now I think we're going to throw in some pumpkin. All right. Here we go. Is so it, let's make sure we've got everything added in. Oh, vanilla. Oh, gosh, we almost forgot that. And How you've much? never two teaspoons. Oh, we're going for it. Okay, um, so we're going to get that in. And you have added the ginger, the nutmeg, the cinnamon. Mm, all the good stuff baking is Baking soda and baking powder. Mm, so Help it rise. Help it rise. That's right. Okay, and then we're just going to fold in the floured dates and nuts, of which I got chopped pecans. Because Ooh, that sounds good. I love pecans. Mm -hmm. no. They're delicious. Yes, they're very sweet oh, and they're good. Really good. Yes. And then you can candy those those bad boys. Oh, yes. Mm, and then so you can eat a pound and a half in one sitting. <laughs> not that you should, <laughs> but if you did, I absolutely <laughs> would not judge you. My friend Melissa makes those and she gives them out at different holidays. Yes, like around Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I would never bring them home. I would hoard those because they were so yummy. You wouldn't want to share them with your family? No. Uh, no. So good. Can Melissa be my friend? <laughs> yes, I'll share. Oh, Oh, yay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to add in. I'm, I think I'll just put in little handfuls and we'll Did just. Did you wash your hands? Oh, no. <laughs> So here we go. Yes, of course I washed my hands. We're going to measure cooking. new nuts and dates. <laughs> Kristen and her filthy hands strikes again. I also said earlier in the podcast, much to my embarrassment, I said, I'm going to mess with the nuts. 
Inappropriate. <laughs> yes. I did. I, I, I think did. you really need to put more in there. Okay, I'll start. I'll start putting them in there. Don't you have a funny story about your daughter and pecans or pecan pie? Oh, I do. <laughs> So uh, my my husband, born and raised Southerner, mm-hmm. and obviously, as we've mentioned, I was not. And so I frequently like to harass my daughter and get her to pronounce things the way that we would pronounce them in Ohio versus in the South. Oh, yeah. And so there's lots of little things that we mentioned, but... For this story, it's about the pecan. So in the South, it is a pecan. In Ohio, it is a pecan. Pecan. Mm -hmm. Obviously, these are huge generalizations. Everybody can pronounce it any way they want. Yes. That's fine. So we are in Ohio. We had actually gone to a big boy. And she's like, oh, look, mom, they have pecan pie. And I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. girl, Mm -hmm. you're in Ohio. You need to pronounce it the Ohio way. That would be pecan. She's like, oh, okay. And then I kid you not, it's got to be like... Like 30 seconds later, the waitress walks up and is like, y'all good? And we're like, yep. She's like, can I interest you in anything? Some pecan pie? <laughs> no. My daughter looks at me like, liar. I love it. Well, it's so funny because I recently saw a TikTok, shocker, and it was an indigenous person who was saying, hey, you guys do not need to have this great debate. Is it pecan or is it pecan? Okay. She said, because the indigenous people who lived up in the north of, okay. of the country, yep. actually those who spoke the Algonquin languages, okay. the word for nuts or the word for pecan was very close to the word pecan. Okay. Right. So the Kickapoo language, the word for nut was pecana. Ah. Uh-huh. Yes. And then in Potawatomi, <gasps> we know Potawatomi. We do. Yeah, in Potawatomi, it's called Bagan, like B-G-A-N uh-huh. or Pagan. Interesting. Right. So those of us who grew up, up near where these um, indigenous people lived who spoke this Algonquin language, right. we pronounce it like they did. Of course. Pecan. Right. Yes. But I just found that fascinating. Oh, cool. And when I saw the word Potawatomi, it just brought me back. Back oh to our my gosh. Because we would go up to Pokagon State Park. Yep. And that's in Indiana. It I is. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we would stay at the Potawatomi Inn mm-hmm. there. Now, as an adult, I have very fond memories of it. Mm-hmm. As an angsty teen, I can remember being like, dang, we have to go to dang state park. What the heck are we going to walk in nature? This stinks. I don't want to do this. I think I was probably crabby the whole time we were there, every time we went. Do you remember me being crabby? No. Oh. No. Maybe it was just norm for the time. <laughs> I bet it was. <laughs> I bet I was just a crab apple the entire time. 12 to 18. I was probably a crab No crabbier than you were at home. That's right. We were just happy to be able to spread out in nature and distance ourselves. (laughs) Okay, so I think it's time to put these in the cake pan. It's said to get round cake pans, which is funny because I read online that torts are almost always round. Oh, interesting. So that's perfect. But we are going to, I think, grease the pans in two different ways. Yes, I like to bake, Mm -hmm. and I would say that Crisco greasing a pan is the way to go. It is all I use in baking. I don't ever parchment on the bottom of my cakes. Well, for cakes, I Crisco and flour. Mm -hmm. This one does not say to flour. No, they Um, want you to just grease the bottom only, not even the sides. (laughs) Um, Okay, so I'm going to use Crisco on mine because I find it to be the superior method. Right. But my TikTok addicted sister, (laughs) I found a video by this wonderful woman on TikTok. And she talked about how she does this butter paper method. Okay. And her name is the Pink Haired Baker Five Loaves. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yep. And she actually takes the sheets, the little like wax paper that the butter comes on. Okay. And she puts it with the butter side up on the bottom of a cake pan. And then she kind of takes her fingers and smooches out the butter sure. onto the areas of the cake pan that's not covered by this little it. piece of paper. I get it. So yeah. it's kind of like buttery parchment. And she says it works out every time. She showed when she turned out the cake, it just flopped right out of that cake pan. And so I thought, let's try this. What a fun idea. This is a great competition. Yeah, and I'm concerned that it doesn't look like there's a lot of leftover butter 
um, for me to be spreading on the rest of the cake pan, but I'm going to give it a try with okay. my fingers here. And, you know, the cool thing, she just keeps all her butter wrappers in a Ziploc baggie or in a container in the freezer huh. until she needs them That's for baking. Cool. All right. So, okay. So I have, we have our tins. Yep. Greased in our variety of method. Carrie's dishing out the torque batter. Ooh, that's looking good. Hey, Carrie, do you know what? Hey, Kristen. Hey, Carrie. Yes. Hey, hey, Carrie. I feel like we're on the Mickey Mouse show. <laughs> You know, that's funny. I saw another TikTok about that. What? Yes. It was a woman going around to people our age and saying, what is the Mickey Mouse theme song? Okay. So Carrie, what is the Mickey Mouse theme song? M -S -E -K -U -I -M -O -U -S -E. mm -hmm. Right. And then she went to people who are my son's age and a little bit older. And guess what they sang? Oh. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. It's from the TV show. It is. So they know a different Mickey Mouse theme song. Isn't that weird? That's just wrong. There's only one right one. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. Absolutely. Okay, so speaking of children's shows, when my daughter was little, we would watch a PBS show before she had to get on the bus. I, I work at home. And so then my TV would remain on and the next PBS show would play, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Tiger. Oh, yeah. But it took me... I have to say about a year before it dawned on me Daniel Tiger was one of Mr. Rogers characters now maybe I'm totally wrong and I've made this up completely and totally but oh. the Daniel Tiger I believe is based off of Mr. Rogers you know he had that fairy tale I don't even know what it was with the puppets of the king land of make-believe land of make-believe lady Elaine and I believe that Daniel Tiger stems from oh my gosh the land of make-believe you know what when we go put these in the oven let's go look it up I make sure that I'm not lying to you. I think fact checking me is probably a wise choice and should be done at all times. Yeah. Because I tend to think I know things and it turns out I don't. I, I think so, you're right. So just like being an adult, <laughs> which I'm not very good at, regaling you with accurate facts. Not so good at that either. <laughs> so, so good. We will double check. Oh, these look so pretty and shiny. I'm excited to eat these. All right. This says to bake in a moderate oven. What? It's no, a, no, it gives us the temperature, oh. but I think that's hilarious. All right. So before we put these in, I thought it was really cool that on the mm -hmm. Mary's memo, it says that she got these recipes from uh, a bake sale. That yeah. She was a part of like an auxiliary. Bryan Community Hospital's Auxiliary Homes for the Holidays. And they had a bake sale. And I, I'm going to assume that these were just three of the recipes that people yeah. she must have tried them or said, hey, bring in your recipes. Yeah. And so good call, Mary, because we are super Super excited about this. Really excited. So on this same Mary's memo, they have a cranberry orange nut bread and a sour cream coffee cake. Ooh, that sounds good too. Yeah, but we made the pumpkin one because it, we thought it sounded the most Thanksgiving y. Oh, well, I mean, it has pumpkin in it, of course. Well, yeah. It does. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you need help getting the oven open? Nope. I got it myself. All right. Well, then into the oven they go. Well, the torts are out of the oven. They look beautiful, and man, does the house smell like Thanksgiving. Oh, it smells so much like Thanksgiving. It mm -hmm. makes me want some turkey and stuffing. It makes me want some pumpkin spice ramen. Oh, it is so <laughs> gross. Okay, so in the cooling process, I think we've gotten mixed up which one was the one that I put the butter paper down on the right. bottom, and which one you did Crisco. So what we've decided to do is to take them out of the pans at the same time yes and see which one comes out easiest they look pretty good they're a little sticky on the top they're very sticky so i'm thinking we're just going to have to flip them and then leave them upside down yes yeah and remove the butter paper yeah okay. oh let's try it all right okay. let's do it so we each have our pan we're gonna have dueling flippage on your mark on get set flippy oh, oh. Carrie's split and it does not have the butter paper on the bottom. So we're going to see. We're going to try mine one more time. Mine came out perfectly. Listen to wow. her mocking her sister. Carrie's cake split in half, dumping it, it over. And mine came out in one perfect cake. It did. Mine is all broken. Wow. We pink haired baker five loaves. Thank you so much. What an amazing 
tip. Go check her out on TikTok. Well, these look moist and beautiful. They absolutely do. And uh, before we move forward with the taste testing, yes, I am very proud to announce that Daniel Tiger, in fact, was related to um, Mr. Mr. Rogers. Rogers. My gosh, I forgot his name. <laughs> um, Daniel Tiger was related to Mr. Rogers. Yes. And we all need to take a moment and bask in the fact that I was correct. Oh, yes. I, I feel like after all of the errors I so freely <laughs> shared today. <laughs> and wait, and other podcasts. Oh, the errors yes. you do on other podcasts. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Me too. Me the too. fact that I finally got one right. Yay, Carrie. Um, I yeah, I need a moment. You're gonna be riding this high for a while. I, I might. Because it really doesn't happen very often. But who cares about that? I was right about Daniel Tiger. Yes, you were. It was done um kind of in tribute to Mr. Rogers after he passed away. Mm -hmm. They created this. So cool. Oh, yay, me. All right, so we are gonna dig into the broken tort. <laughs> I was harsh. I'm glad she didn't say Carrie's broken tart. I was just She go. thought it. She thought it so loud I heard it. AKA Carrie's tort. Mm -hmm. That's right. Kristen whispering creepily. <laughs> All right, I'm putting a little piece on my beautiful little Thanksgiving plate. And I have the cool whip. All right, I'm taking a bite. Okay. Uh, Kristen just made the This is Heavenly face. Oh, it is. Um, I think that uh, Pumpkin Tort may be a winner. And the Cool Whip makes it taste like childhood. So tell us all about it, Kristen. I'm going to tell you, it is so moist. The nuts are perfect. And the dates don't particularly stand out. It's not too sweet. It no. Actually, the sweetness from the Cool Whip is perfect. Because yes. it kind of almost needs that little bit of extra sweetness. It is dense. Yes. And oh, so moist. Oh my goodness, I could highly recommend this, and this makes a very happy Thanksgiving ending. I agree completely, and so we're going to have to cut a nice slice for your friend Beth to try. Oh yes, I can't wait. Me either. We picked a good one to share. Yes, we did. We are so excited to have a guest joining us for the taste testing this episode. It is our friend Beth. Beth is not only a great friend, she's an award-winning businesswoman and fellow Ohioan. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon Thanksgiving episode, Beth. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. We're so glad you're here. Absolutely. So Carrie and I grew up in Northwest Ohio. Where did you grow up? I grew up in, I guess, Northeast Ohio. Oh. So not too far from Cleveland, about an hour south of Cleveland in Canfield, Ohio. Oh, Canfield. Nice. So Beth, was there any Thanksgiving tradition from your childhood that you continue to have today? You know, Kristen, what's interesting is most of the Thanksgiving traditions I love today are from my adult life. Oh my gosh. That I've actually implemented and brought in as an adult. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's two that I can think of right off the bat. One is what I call Gratitude Alphabet. I actually got it from a Jason Mraz song. Oh. But it's, we go through around the table through the alphabet A through Z and say what we're grateful for. Oh, And awesome. I often use it when I'm trying to fall asleep, too, at night. Oh, that's um, a great idea. Yeah, that really it is. It actually works. <laughs> So that's one thing that I really enjoy doing at Thanksgiving now every year. And the other one is I had a place in Daytona Beach for a while. And mm -hmm. so every Thanksgiving, we would actually make sack lunches in paper bags and take them to all the homeless people Aww, uh, hanging a, out around. What a great tradition. It was yes. fantastic. That's so awesome. haven't done it here in Atlanta, but... Mm -hmm. um, it was certainly a tradition that we started, and I will probably find opportunities to continue it. Yes, that's really cool. So for us, it was never a family gathering without our Aunt Cindy's spinach salad. Is there a Thanksgiving dish that you ate when you were a kid that you really miss when it's not on the table? I would have to say there's two. Stuffing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely have to have stuffing at my Thanksgiving. Now, I do make it a bit healthier than my mom made it. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, so we're more veggies. Yeah, oh, are you a good. bowl of stuffing kind of family or like a sheet of stuffing kind of family? Oh, both. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> you you got to have both. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, and then pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge pumpkin fan. So, so excited for today. 
today? Yes. Right. Well, let's get to the tasting then. Here's some Orpha Tomlinson's Pumpkin Date Tort. Hopefully this will be right up your alley. Some yes. And pumpkin-y. And... We loved it. The spices and mm-hmm. the, the pecans were, I think, probably my favorite part. Yeah. Well, and the whole house smells like Thanksgiving. I love it. So yeah. what do you think, Beth? Is it a keeper? Absolutely. Oh. I love the spices as well. And the nuts in it just give it that nice little crunch. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's it's fantastic. Yay. We loved it too. So um, yeah, no, I think it's definitely a keeper. Matter of fact, I would love the recipe oh. for the Thanksgiving coming up. And you know, I'm just going to add this to our uh, round the table. Be grateful for Thanksgiving time. That's oh, a great wonderful. idea. But I'll probably still make my pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh, that's okay. As long as you make the crust with lard. With lard. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I'll give it a try. Okay. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks again to Beth for being our first ever Mom's Wooden Spoon guest. If you would like to see all of the cool things that go with this podcast, please head on over to our website, momswoodenspoon.com. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, please let your friends and family know about us. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food.